Welcome to the Wealth is in the Details podcast. In this podcast, financial planner Peter Raskin helps families and business owners understand and prepare for their wealth journey. Along the way, thoughtful and detailed planning can provide clarity and confidence as clients confront a multitude of financial decisions. Listen in as Peter shares stories and insight into people's wealth journeys. Now, let's get into today's podcast. Travel always seems to be good for the mind and the spirit. You know, it's new places, pushing yourself outside your usual routine. It's wonderful. Welcome back to The Wealth is in the Details. I'm Patrice Sikora with your host, Peter Raskin, who did take a trip recently. Peter, share with us, where did you go? Hi, Patrice. Um, yeah, we, we we just got back from a, a really a, a wonderful two weeks in um, in Phoenix, Arizona, mm. and it, it was just really fun. We stayed at a, uh, a a nice resort that had plenty of space. We had a full kitchen, so we didn't have to go out for every meal. And, and nearby, there was lots of hiking and good restaurants, and went to a museum or two, and a botanical garden, and you know, just had a great time. Really nice. It was it was just a, a great space. I, I, I had a, a great space to work and I, I worked most days, uh, either before or after kind of our playtime. And it was really a, a wonderful, wonderful uh, visit for both my wife and myself. Oh, fantastic. Um, I, botanical garden, that kind of throws me a little bit. Somehow I don't think of a botanical garden in Phoenix. Well, if you, you know, it is the desert, uh, which is, there's a lot of vegetation in the desert. There's a lot of col- there's a, a lot of color. Um, it, something's always blooming. It's it's really it's really quite quite interesting, and mm-hmm. it was uh, lots of great history there, and you know things that I didn't know about. So I that's partly what I like about yeah. being away is you get to learn things. Which me, I mean, you say wealth is a journey. That's an important theme at Raskin Planning Group, and this is exactly what you were doing. You were on a journey. Yeah, I, I think journey is a great metaphor for, for life, you know, because it reminds us that the destination isn't our, our only goal. You know, it's important, but but it's not the only thing. And, and in our case, you know, wealth isn't our only goal. And today I'll, I'll use journey as a, as a metaphor for, for investing. All right, take it away. Okay, so so we've talked about this in, in past podcasts, but you know when I'm planning a, a journey or, or a travel event, I I, I really what I'm really lo- looking for is an experience. Mm-hmm. You know, I I want more or less of certain experiences on each trip. You know, they don't all have to be the same for me. The destination is, is important, but but I focus on what I want to get out of each destination. Mm-hmm. You know, do. Am I looking for total relaxation? Is that is that what I want? If I want that kind of vacation, maybe I'll I'll be on a lake or or a beach. But but other vacations, maybe I'll want to be be uh, excited and and I'll learn things, or maybe I'll want to just refresh my mind, get the the usual day to day life that we lead at that hectic life, and just refresh everything. Got it. Or maybe I want physical activity, or I want to eat really well and <laughs> and have good wine or or I want the great beauty or, or or maybe it's reconnecting with the people that I love. So, you know, it's all those things. And some you know, depending upon the trip, I I'll, I'll want more or less of of these these objectives. And I and I will say this that mostly what I what I want when I go away is I don't want to worry. I, and I want to minimize stress because that I have that all the time in my day-to-day life mm-hmm. and, and to me getting away is is getting away from the, the worries and and the stresses of of life and that's what that's my ultimate goal but i, I want to take advantage of, of other things um along the way i think i can see the connection to financial planning but show me the way okay so the, think of think of a financial goal as a different destination you know whether it's education you want to save for for your kids uh educations or, or or your grandkids you you know you need a new car next year you you've got a child's wedding that you you think may be coming up in in a few years 
Um, maybe your goal is to is to, is that second home in, in, you know five to ten years from now, or 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 maybe it's it's retirement and you know in 10, 15 years or five years you're going to turn on that income, and it, it's going to replace your earnings. Um, so so that those are those are your goals and and since you have different goals, it's not just one goal. You may want different experiences for your money. Uh, you know, you'll you'll want to deploy certain strategies that will help help you get there. Again, the same the the metaphor is is the travel experience. You know, you'll you'll take different a different trip will mean different forms of transportation. <laughs> you know, it, hmm? you'll yeah. you'll be doing different things. Um, but 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 from an investment perspective, you'll want you'll you'll want different attributes from your investments. You'll you may be looking for safety and liquidity. You know, you just don't want to take any risk because you might need that money sure. um, in, in the short run. Or or maybe if it's for retirement, maybe your goal is is income. Um, maybe your goal is, is is growth. Maybe you want your assets to grow appreciably above inflation. Maybe you want a little bit of all of that. <laughs> and that's okay too. Um, I, tax efficiency. A lot of people that are investing oh, don't want to pay taxes. Um, and others are really concerned about managing volatility and risk. So I, I, those are, are all attributes and, and experiences that you're looking for when you're investing. I, I think you know, mostly when I think about investing uh, for at least making recommendations for clients, I, I think they don't want to worry. <laughs> yeah, and they want they want to minimize stress. So similar to to my my travel and vacation uh, mode uh, when it comes to their investing and their planning, I think they just don't want they don't want those worries and stresses in their world. I agree. I mean, isn't everybody's goal that to worry less and and really not stress out? Yeah, I I can't speak for everyone, but but I feel like most of our clients are looking for more clarity in their in their financial lives, and they want to feel more confident that they're on that right that the right path of, of their journey. And, and, and my belief it, again that 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 travel um, metaphor is that a a well planned vacation just increases my chances of success, you know? Um, a a well-planned financial plan is more likely to be successful. I, there's no guarantees either way. Um, that's that's part of life. But I think if I, if I plan out, I think ahead and I'm thoughtful about what I want and how I want, how I might want to get there, then I, I, I'm more likely to achieve those goals. And I think anybody who's traveled knows if you plan, there is less stress and there's more likelihood you're going to enjoy what you do. So if we're talking about investing, um, well, let's talk about the steps for a great journey. Yeah, it's, to me, it focuses on, on really two things. One is having a clear understanding of those goals and what you need to do to achieve those goals. And, and I think you get there through a, a comprehensive financial planning process. And and number two, and I'll, I'll talk about both of these in more detail, uh, I think you, you have to consider what might go wrong. Oh, yeah. Am I, am I prepared? So so w- when we think about vacation goals, y- you know, w- w- that's pretty evident. Mm-hmm. Do I want to be active? Do I want to be relaxed? Do I want to be learning, going to museums, going to a cooking class, those kinds of things. You know, what do I want from this vacation? And and from a financial perspective, it's, you know, when do I want to retire? How much do I need to save to meet this goal? How do I reduce my tax bite? How do I transfer wealth to my kids? Um, how do I invest most efficiently so I, I can meet all of these goals? So so that's that's when I think about having a clear understanding it's understanding what we want and then implementing strategies uh investments to help us get there i like and, that yeah i think it's a it's a it's a good analogy um but just as importantly i want to make sure i i think about what could go wrong not that i want it to go wrong right mm-hmm. um but you know again back to travel what if there are plane delays? You know, um, 
weather hassles? You know, what if I get sick? Do I have travel insurance? If I'm planning uh, a vacation at, at, at the beach in, in New England or the Northeast, and it's a lousy week of weather, <laughs> you, you know, am I going to be miserable? And, and and maybe I won't because I've got a good book or I got I've got we've got lots of board games and and I'm absolutely fine because my goal is to be with my family and my kids and if I don't if I'm not sitting on the beach I'm okay with that I can go on a hike in the rain you know so as long as I've been thoughtful about it and I can deal with it then then I'm good and the same with from a financial standpoint I I don't expect to be unemployed but that happens. Um, I don't expect a recession tomorrow, but it happens. Bear markets, you know, sickness, disability. Um, kids have needs that are unplanned. You know, we we just need to put that into our planning and our model and and see how that affects us. Is that going to blow up our plan if if something happens along the way? How well? How do you increase your chances of success? Now, in travel planning, I get it, but when it comes to to the the financial journey, how do you increase your chances of success? Well, from an investment perspective, I think what what I can do is is meaningfully diversify my assets. I I, I want to do things in, in in different ways, you know. So so let's talk about risk. Let's talk about investment risk. Uh, and I think about uh, there being two kinds of risk that we need to need to consider. And the first is, um, is what we, what I call marketers or systematic risk, mm -hmm. uh, back to travel. You know, if, if we're, if we're traveling and we have rainy, rainy days and I go outside, I'm going to get wet. <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of <laughs> hard to avoid rain when, when you want to be outside. And, and in the same way with the market, if the market is responding to economic conditions like like recessions, inflation, uh, wars, political uncertainty, chances are our entire portfolio is going to be affected. It's it's hard, just like it's hard to go outside and not get wet when it's raining. It's hard to invest in the stock market and diversify and diversify away market risk. It's it's just when things go down. Things go down for almost everything. Okay, and, and so that's that's market risk. But then we've got um, a, a second form of risk that I I call a specific or unsystematic risk, and it, it's the risk of owning a specific security or 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 owning a specific industry. You know, so just an example for for months or years. You would have been really a happy investor in companies like like Kodak, or <laughs> and or Enron, or even General Electric. And I laugh um, <laughs> because yeah. they are now. <laughs> exactly. Um, well, you know, General General Electric is still in in, in it's business, true. but it's, and they are in but, fact remaking themselves. So they say yes. Yes, they are, and they're but they're a very different business than than yes. they were during the, the heyday. <laughs> Kodak and Enron are just no longer here, um, and in Enron's case, that's a good thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but that's that's specific risk. That's the, a, 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 sp a sp specific risk to an industry or to to a specific company, mm -hmm. and, and you have to be prepared and know what you're investing in. Um, you need to diversify across sectors of the economy that do different things when there's more or less inflation. They do different things when the U.S. dollar is worth more or less. And, and, and they do different things when the, when the economy is growing or shrinking. And, and that, to me, is diversification. You, so you, you, knowing what you own is, is really important. And, and what this, to me, is, such, is so current and such a current problem that I wanted to to briefly talk about it, you know, if if you currently own the the S and P five hundred, which is a, a, a an index of large company U S stocks, mm -hmm. uh, did you know that thirty percent of the market value of the index is invested in about ten stocks, and let just me, ten stocks? They're tech stocks, right? They are, 
and, yeah. and those stocks are are the mega tech companies that that right now are have uh, are investing in um in ai artificial intelligence you know like like apple and meta and alphabet and nvidia um, microsoft these big big companies have done extraordinarily well this year they actually did very poorly last year 2022 hmm. But this year they're doing great, <laughs> and, and you know most of the positive returns of the S and P, which is up about fourteen percent as of mid October this year in twenty twenty three, and that that performance is is primarily due to the performance of of only seven stocks. Hi, this is Catherine Broy from the Raskin Planning Group. Apologies for the interruption. Thanks so much for listening to Wealth is in the Details. We hope you're enjoying it so far. If you have any questions or would like to talk more about this topic, please visit our website at www.raskinplanning.com. Look for the podcast show notes and connect with us via social media. Those mega tech stocks. Yeah. And if you only own the other 493 stocks, <laughs> your, perf- your your performance year to date would, would be only about 6%. I'll take it. I'll take yeah, it. That's, that's not bad. It really isn't bad considering, but when we're, compared when we're looking at, yeah, we want compared to 14%, like why, why aren't, why aren't I getting my 14%? Um, well, maybe because your portfolio isn't, isn't 30% in, in those 10 stocks or seven stocks. So, so right now, if you're investing in the S and P 500, 500, you're actually placing a, a, a pretty large bet on, on AI and technology. Um, and, and I've seen a lot of uh, portfolios recently that that are self-managed. You know, clients come to us; they they've been managing their own their own assets for for a while, and they they not only do they own the S and P five hundred, but they may have also bought over the last few years Apple, Alphabet, Tesla, Microsoft. <laughs> so they're, so they're actually even, double. Yeah, they're even less diversified than they think. That's right. They're doubling down. Yeah, and when I asked them why they why they bought the S and P five hundred, they say, "Well, they they wanted to diversify." <laughs> hello, <laughs> yeah, hello, and so so that's that is what I I don't consider meaningful diversification. It doesn't mean that they're not doing really well right now, but this too shall change. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and I'm not predicting mm-hmm. anything. I don't know what's going to happen with these stocks. Um, they could continue to run up. But it doesn't happen forever. It just it it can't. No, look so, at the cryptocurrency stocks. Look at the the tech boom. The back in the two thousands, it um, it will run a course. There will be some fallout. Exactly. You know whether it's the oil industry, whether it's uh, technology. There's always a, a sector of our economy that just is is hot, hot to go. <laughs> you know, and people right, are right. pour money into it, and then it, then it. It, it 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 has a period of time where when it's not doing as well, and and so I expect that to happen. We just don't know when. Um. So so meaningful diversification is when you own companies that have different ex- that give you different experiences in different market conditions, and that approach smooths out your ride and your journey, and that's so important because because. Diversification isn't about placing bets on certain stocks. It, it, it's about spreading out your risk and, and having different experiences. Um, and, and, and that's why, I, I again, that travel journey analogy metaphor makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we, we want our we want our our goals to give us certain things at certain times and, and the same thing with investing. You know, I think that right now, um, the last two years have been really interesting. I, I think shows the power of the diversification. Uh, you know, for example, value stocks did much better than growth stocks in 2022. Hmm. It, 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 but so far in 23, growth stocks have done far better than value stocks. Um, there'll be periods of time where where U.S. stocks have done do a lot better than international stocks, mm-hmm. especially when the dollar is strong. And then there'll be other times when gl- these global stocks um, located everywhere around the world do better than, than U.S. stocks. 
That's right. It, it just doesn't, ha- it's not always the same each and every period of time. We just have to, to prepare for it. it another important thing I, I just want to make sure people know or, and really appreciate is that managing risk is really important to an overall achievement of a goal, um, a long-term goal. Okay. If we're losing less in our portfolio, we have smaller losses when the market isn't doing well. That means we don't have to generate the huge returns when markets rebound. Mm-hmm. We can do well by not doing as badly. <laughs> that sounds strange, but you're absolutely right. Yeah, think about yeah. it. Yeah, it, it's really, really important to meeting your goals. Um, and, and I think it's also, uh, you know, not only do we want meaningful diversification, but but part of planning is 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 managing your expectations, you know, and dealing with with disappointments. And one thing I always say about about diversification is, is that it's bound to disappoint. Hmm. <laughs> diversification doesn't really guarantee you anything. Okay, but, that's true. That's true. But then neither does non-diversification. Well, non-diversification um, potentially exposes you to more downside risk. A- and and that happens uh, w- when markets go down, all asset classes, all, all kinds of stocks mm-hmm. tend to correlate. They tend to do the same thing. Diversification may not help you in all markets. And that's during a really serious uh, a, a bear market, it, it may not it may not feel that good, but but over a over a market cycle, meaning over five to ten years as markets go up and down and up and down again, um, it's really important to have these reasonable expect expectations. Diversification can often be very helpful at key points in a market cycle, and that's what you, when you have to stay fully invested, and you can't lose faith. And you have to wait for those recoveries. So when I say have reasonable expectations, understand that markets do what they do. They go up, they go down. And you have to deal with the disappointment of, of, of that portfolio and have faith that it eventually will recover and do and do well. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's so, so very important, I believe. Is it smarter? Well, in your opinion, is it better to have someone else doing this for you so that you don't get emotionally involved? Well, in my opinion, and this is yes. self-serving, um, I think it makes sense to outsource to to, to the experts. And, and I think that increases your chances of, of success. You know, I, I think of all the time, and I've mentioned this before, uh, there's the big mistake and the little mistake. You know, and hiring a professional and paying for service I think is potentially maybe just a little mistake at at some point in time, because I think it avoids the big mistake. <laughs> you know, think so. So think about the cost of hiring a professional, whether it's an an accounting professional, a legal professional, a doctor. You know, just someone that you're paying for you're paying it, it, for advice, and I think your chances of of, of success are really are higher. And I think you avoid the big, the big, big problems. And I think that helps you feel more confident. It helps you worry less. Uh, it, you know, it, it, paying for that service doesn't help all the time, but at least you have someone to call to keep you fully invested when you're really anxious. <laughs> to keep to, you focused, yes. Yeah, keep you focused, to update your plan, to make sure that you're still on the right, uh, on the right path to meeting your goals. You know, I think we should all focus on the things that we can control that that give us pleasure and not worry about the things that we just can't control, like like the overall market market risk. We just can't control that. But but by spending time figuring figuring out what you want on this journey, figuring out what you want for in this financial plan, uh, I think your chances of success increase. I think when you're hiring, outsourcing to experts, hiring advisors um, in certain aspects of your planning, I think I think you'll you'll be many people will be in better, better, better taken care of. So that's that's my thought. Well, you know, Peter, in your voice, I can hear it. You get so excited about talking about 
the journey, the successes, and helping people on the right path, it is that journey. It is not just the destination, and you love it. I do. I, I think um, a, a financial planner is, is a coach. We're, we're enablers for for our family to meet those, you know, really personal, important objectives uh, that really matter to them. And, and, and I'm hopeful that, that the, pl- the planning process allows a, a family to enjoy the journey, not just that destination, it, it, the implementation, the monitoring, monitoring of the journey are just the tools we use so that families can make all the adjustments they need to do. Um, and because because adjustments are going to happen. I mean, mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. called life. It's called life in motion. You know, <laughs> yeah. it, it just it's just part of what we do. And so um, I, I think just like you hire a primary care physician to do to do an annual update, hire hire a planner to, to help you work through the annual uh, your annual goals and objectives, see how they've changed, see see if you're still on the right path. And I think that, that'll give you the clarity and uh, help you build confidence that you can actually meet these goals. And again, I can hear the excitement in your voice that you really do love this. So how can listeners reach you, Peter Raskin? Well, the, probably the best way is to is to uh, go to go to our website, raskinplanning.com. And uh, our contact information is there and there's uh, links to our, our previous podcasts and other resources that are there too. So it's a great, great way to get to know us. All right. And listeners, of course, we encourage you to follow or subscribe to Peter's podcast. The wealth is in the details and share it with others. And thank you for being with us. Thank you for listening to the wealth is in the details podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Lincoln Financial Advisors Corp. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning. Peter Raskin is a registered representative of Lincoln Financial Advisors. Securities offered through Lincoln Financial Advisors Corp., a broker-dealer, member SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through Sagemark Consulting, a division of Lincoln Financial Advisors, a registered investment advisor. Insurance offered through Lincoln Affiliates and other fine companies. Raskin Planning Group is a marketing name for registered representatives of Lincoln Financial Advisors. Lincoln Financial Advisors Corporation and its representatives do not provide legal or tax advice. You may want to consult a legal or tax advisor regarding any legal or tax information as it relates to your personal circumstances.